Welcome to the Inflection Podcast, where we explore the pivotal moments that have shaped us into who we are today. I am your host, Anebi, and I can't wait to dive into these moments with you. Let's get it. Welcome to another episode of the Inflection Podcast. Today, I have the unique pleasure of having Lilia with me. He's the co-founder of the Hebron Ecosystem, which consists of, among several things, the Hebron Software Engineering Consultancy and also the Hebron IT Academy. So awesome to have you, Lilia. Thank and you. It's my pleasure and honor to be part of this podcast. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for obliging. I know when we first met some years ago, I was really intrigued by the story, right? The why behind what is the Hebron ecosystem and growing it into more more things. But what did that look like for you, right? Yeah, so first we started with why. We didn't start with how much the money or how to make money, but we started with the impact. So Hebron IT Academy was founded eight years ago first before any other things evolved later. The academy is aiming to help a teenage orphans, so 18 plus year old orphans and underprivileged youth in Ukraine to train in technology, provide job opportunities. And we say Holland is universal, but opportunity is not. So our main goal is to provide that opportunity to get uh, stable jobs, healthy families, and just build stronger economy, especially these days during the war, Russian invasion. So we first started Hebron IT Academy, and then after uh, a year, we realized charity is great. Somebody has to pay the bills, but the main challenge we faced was to provide the jobs. A lot of uh, local tech companies didn't want to hire recent graduates and somebody with very little experience and especially orphans. Uh, unfortunately, in Ukraine, it's a little bit different environment and not a lot of tech C-level people. Decision makers are Christian and they don't understand the mission. My husband and I realized we've got to start our own company. So at first we teach our students how to fish and not provide ready fish, so life skills. And second, be able to provide that the source of internship and position and, and job uh, opportunity. Yeah. That's why we started Hebron Soft. And the rest is the history because there is so much else going on. But yeah. basically, the why is uh, in our way. That's amazing. And, and thank you so much for sharing that added context on the why. For you, though, right, scaling that, obviously, I know it wasn't just a, a walk in the park. Hey, it was all rosy, but what did that look like scaling outside of Ukraine? What did that look like in terms of yeah. partnerships and customers? And Yeah. So from day one, we've uh, been working with U.S.-based North American clientele. It happened that I used to live in the Bay Area. I went to Penn State University and then I moved to the Bay Area and I got into tech uh, uh, at San Jose University and having a lot of uh, connections, networks. So my husband and I uh, lived there back in 2012, 11, 13, 14, and then we moved back to Ukraine in 15. And uh, it was easier to start when you have a network. My suggestion is to build relationship early on, even if you're in high school or a college, university, you've got to build your network and people that you'll stay, uh, will stay along with you for all your lifetimes. So the first client was my uh, group mate from the university in Ukraine. She moved to the U.S. and her husband and her had an idea, a startup that we started developing. And that's how we got the first client. She just visited Ukraine, we met, and that's how it started drawing. But it's very hard to build your case studies, uh, your portfolio, if you are not living in the U uh, U.S., so North American, when you are not meeting with leads on a daily basis. You don't network, right? You don't go to those events. So we started getting some business development people and advisory board who helped us a lot was our advisory board who 
were there for the mission and our our goals had to help change lives of orphans and underprivileged youth. And they started providing some references, travel to the US and Canada for different business meetings. They would come with me, sit down and help uh, those and older retired people with a uh, gray beard uh, who have a lot of experience in tech. And that was a tremendous help at the beginning. Mm. Of course, there were like thousands no's, but amongst thousands no's, you have one yes, and that's what keeps you moving. And also when you have a big goal uh, of not just growing business for the sake of money and the material stuff, but for the sake of changing lives, it motivates you more. You wake up every morning knowing that you want to go to that job and you go to bed fulfilled. But also the people that are in our network and now all of our clients, they are there with us, not only for the high quality services, which we do provide in the first place, but for the mission that we do in this world. Oh my gosh, that is packed with a lot of good stuff. And I hear a few themes in there. One of those being the importance of a network, right? We're not built to be in isolation. The whole thing... In our culture, right, generally in the West, in the Western world and, and elsewhere too, you hear this thing of the self-made business owner, the self-made entrepreneur, which there, there is some truth to that of hustle and going, but the more you dive into those stories, as in your case and mine and many others, is being self-made is a fallacy because we're made by our network <laughs> as well, right? Those who pour into those who point to us and help us. I actually looked at a post on LinkedIn today, and I I will write something on that. That's speaking to networking, right? Networking is this thing we look at as, oh my gosh, it's so daunting. It's narcissistic to network and promote myself. But that's not really what it is, right? It's if, If you look at it as your network as a series of consent circles, right? You're adding value to us, you're adding value to you, and you just do that naturally. Over time, your network grows. So I think you do that really well, right? I've been on some calls with you or you know, talked about projects you're working on and something you do very naturally and you're, you're gifted at it, just building networks. And then another thing I hear there is just start, right? Just get started, don't overcomplicate it and start building. You mentioned case studies and high quality work, right? Don't just start building so far stuff, put the time and effort into it. One thing I want to dive into is the advisory board because that's something I've been looking at and I've had some conversations around that. You don't mind my asking earlier on for your advisory board, were those paid board seats or was it more so they were volunteering because they had a heart for what you were doing and wanted to be part of it? Yeah. What did it look like at first rate? So it was always volunteering. It was always giving, uh, never paid until these days uh, for eight years, we don't pay any advisory mm-hmm. board members. Uh, all of them are just devoted, passionate uh uh, about the mission and who really want to have us grow and, and help more, uh, children. And so they, yeah, they're not just to, again, grow business, but when they see a new lead, new opportunity, when they go with me to the meeting, so we get together on a quarterly basis, they are, they're providing the network references, thinking how he can improve, coming up with some ideas. Now we have a advanced tech lab at Hebron. That is a ground of all innovations and ideas for our students, graduates, and clients. But they've always been there for for that why. Uh, and adding to like how we are created, yes, God created us as social creatures. And without socializing, we cannot do anything. So like I can be good at uh, networking, communication, but I am really terrible at other things that my team members adding uh, value to or their best mass parts to. So well, let's say our CTO obviously is good at technical side, deep diving, very thorough. Our CEO, August then is great at also paperwork, all kinds of SOs, MSAs, all of that, but also generating some ideas, very intelligent guys. It's your team is who you are, right? Uh, There is a saying, tell me who your friend is and I'll tell you who you are. So in in a way, tell me who your teammates are and I will let you know who you are. So yes, uh, you have to have not only the, the team, but also a big network to socialize 
And sometimes like maybe another advice, uh, you meet a lot of people and then um, you start communicating and you plant seeds. You don't expect to harvest uh, very soon. You t- it takes months, sometimes years. So some of our best clients, uh, we started planting seeds when we started and three or four years later, they just signed a message with us, contracts and started partnering. It just takes time and patience, but also you, you keep in touch, you stay in touch, you always communicate, meet for coffee, lunch, but then it turns to be lifelong connection and relationship. Yeah, that that's really cool and good advice because many times, especially when you're building a company, it's so easy to be so focused on, I need to close this deal. I need to close this sale. So it can even work your demeanor and your approach in, in meetings. Well, looking at it as most, yeah, there might be a deal here, but genuine, I think there's an authenticity there of just getting to know someone, getting, and for them to know you. And by the way, here's what I'm working on. I think that really goes a long way and people pick up on that. And I think you do that really well, just being authentic, right? Learning about someone, sharing about yourself and maybe it will lead to a sale today or in a few years, maybe not. But- there is also another advice before you take, you always have to give. You have to have the mindset that you provide some value before you even close the deal, that uh, you have to work hard to either provide maybe sometimes even free services for POC or connect them with somebody else from your network or do some advice, even bring your team members to do some free technical advice or, or whatever. People feel and know it that... Uh, they want to deal with somebody who is not just take or take for me, but they know that I can put myself and myself in their shoes and understand them, their problems, their needs. Yeah, absolutely. So with building a, a business in Ukraine, obviously the uh, heartbreaking invasion and war with Russia going on right now, I'll ask the obvious question. How has that impacted Hebron Soft and mm. IT Academy? You have right now? Yeah, I would say it's the challenges or problems. A mother of innovation is a mother of innovation, right? So the war has, to, in a way, helped us grow, challenge ourselves, create, innovate. Hebron Soft has been doing quite well all this year and a half. So we haven't had any layoffs, been getting new clients. We are recruiting new people, always hiring new people. But the living under the Iron Dome, like Israel, people in Ukraine want to innovate and create to win the war. Again, there is why do people have to work harder, smarter, because they want to win the war and just become uh, like Israel, uh, a center of startups, great ideas, uh, great high quality services, products, uh, innovations. So we're living under the Iron Dome, like you say, having attacks every day, even now I'm looking, there is a siren in my city in Lviv. Today it's been second wow. or third, but yesterday we had huge attack on Lviv, a lot of damaged buildings and people died, but still our team in Lviv, in Western part of Ukraine is amazing to work with. Today we delivered a great product for San Diego based client. And it's just now, I mean, San Diego being like on the client side, I see what a great work our uh, team has been doing for the last seven, eight months that they've been developing this product. And just, I cannot be happier with the, the results of this release. For him, again, my, the motivation of people is very high because of mm. this war and the goal to win the war. Thank you so much for sharing that. It, it's very inspiring, right? To think, just think about and juxtapose what it, it, it's like to still innovate and come to work and ship good software and do good work with the constant threat, right? Your livelihood and to to your life, literally, with the sirens going on. And that is just fascinating to even think about that your team is still pushing forward and making things happen with that constant threat hanging her head. What I want to also add is that at Hebron IT Academy, having a big facility, we have one of and the parts there is a big garage that uh, we just remodeled. So this summer we are remodeling uh, the whole thing and starting advanced tech lab, advanced technology lab. 
that uh, will be a ground for a lot of innovations and some great creative startup ideas, uh, not in our ecosystem, not only for our students who are going through the academic year this year, but also graduates who graduated and work at different tech companies, not only Hebrosoft, but all around the world and also our clients. So if any of the listeners have some amazing idea they want to implement with us, we have a lot of interns who are ready to take on new challenges and just be devoted, loyal, hardworking to, again, develop and get us closer to the victory. And I will, based on that too, I will share some resources with you. So I lead product at Ledger as in startup, and I believe there might be some collaborative aspect there between you, Ledger, and your advanced tech lab. So we'll talk more about that for short, but yeah. I'll add links to the show notes to the description of this for this episode for those who are interested so they can click and follow up with you. Scattered through this conversation, you've dropped a lot of awesome knowledge bombs and insights. What is one thing or a few things you'd say to the entrepreneur, maybe new or maybe a entrepreneur, they're thinking about it, they don't know how to get started. What are some things that have served you best. Again, you've said a lot of good stuff, but as you think through, what would you say to such a person, right? Who's on a precipice? How do I start? How do I grow? How can I lean in here? Yeah. So there are a lot of uh, pieces of advice, but the main one, uh, don't be afraid to take risk. Be bold. It might be hard the first year or two, but then you will realize uh, great potential and great results. So it's a lot of Hard work you have to put in, thoroughness, be a great communicator. People love to to uh, be listened to and communicate well with. Be a perfectionist, go into as many details as you can. So try to deep dive any product or service or anything you do as much as you can. I guess another thing, maybe a trust, trust yourself, trust your guts, trust God. That's another b- big piece of advice. But yeah, overall, just be yourself, be brave and don't be afraid. God's in control of many things. And if you are called to do something amazing, you'll get there. But just be faithful and do the best you can. It's maybe nothing, no rocket science here. Everything you've heard before, but it's over again and again. Just yeah, all those small pieces of advice. I love it. Thank you so much, Lilia. It's been amazing to have you on the podcast today with me. And your story is very inspiring and fascinating. And it's been amazing to just follow your journey over the the past few years you've been connected. And I'm excited for a lot more to come from you and your team. Yeah, maybe I will add uh, something with the vision. Always have the vision, the why in your mind. Not the S dollar amount, but the why. And therefore, if you have the vision, you will also have the passion and that devotionness, that loyalty. So that's another piece of advice. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.